Hey, my name is Caroline Littick. I'm Ryan Weller. And we're here from Telltale Games, and fans have been wondering what's next for us here. Just a little bit. They've, they've, they've been asking a few things. Yeah, so I yeah. think we have some updates for the rest of 2017 into 2018, right? We do, and I am so freaking excited, especially with what we're doing here at Comic-Con. Yeah, let's just roll right into the first one. Let's just get to it. Yeah. I told you I'd see you again, didn't I? You and me, we're two threads in the same stitch. You see, I met some inspiring people out here. Made some new friends. We are going to have so much fun. <laughs> With season one, we had the challenge of finding out how far we could take Batman and bend it before it breaks. We found out that you could bend it pretty far. The thing that's a lot different for us is that we do a lot of gameplay as Bruce Wayne, which most games are very focused on Batman. In our game, you play both as Bruce and as Batman, so both sides of the identity. Season one was a story about you as Bruce Wayne, seeing everything around you you kind of understood to make you up kind of all fall apart. The whole Batman mythos is all about Bruce Wayne having his parents sacrifice themselves for him at a young age, and our story is about Bruce finding out that his father was actually corrupt. His family wasn't what he thought it was. He's finding out that his company could be taken away from him. The people he cares most about are in danger. His heroes have now really become the people that he now fights. There's a great quote by Harryhausen. The best monster is one you can imagine in repose. In season one, we got a chance to set up some of the villains that people are the most familiar with. But in The Enemy Within, we get to see those villains, those monsters in repose. We're allowing the player to explore a philosophy of a means to an end. Like, how far are they willing to go? What parts of themselves are they willing to compromise to get the job done? Bruce is going to have to realize that the only way to take down some of these villains is to get closer to them. I think as we've seen in the teaser trailer, the biggest new threat is the appearance of the Riddler. Obviously John Doe makes an appearance. We talk about John Doe um, internally as the proto-Joker. Obviously, Telltale games are all about choices. They're all about talking, and then every time you talk to John Doe, you should be wondering, is he listening to what I'm saying? He very well might be. <laughs> The thing that I've always loved about Telltale Games is there's a partnership between myself and the game to where I am helping to create my own narrative. The stakes have never been higher than it does with a Batman game because now I'm creating my own Batman. The sandbox goes from here to here. If you played season one and you enjoyed getting to know some of the Batman villains who were a little bit different than you saw in canon, being able to form close relationships with them, befriend them, become their mortal enemies, you are going to have an amazing time in The Enemy Within. Telltale's Batman The Enemy Within premieres this August. The billionaire or the bat? Which mask will you wear? Oh my God, that is so freaking cool. I cannot wait for this second season of Batman. And Troy Baker is back. I am so stoked. And it premieres in August, which is super close. I, I have to know, what else have the fans been asking about uh, our future endeavors and what we're putting out here? We finished up The Walking Dead, A New Frontier in spring. And we may or may not have had a couple tweets here and there asking about what Clementine's up to. And so we brought our dev team in to talk about what she's up to, where she's going, what her journey is, and what's up next for Telltale's The Walking Dead. So let's take a look at that. We've been on this journey with Clementine since 2012. We had no idea that Clem was going to mean so much to players. When we first started working on Walking Dead, we knew it was a redemption story about the man named Lee. And Clementine was the lens that we see all of our actions. For this to really work, I think we needed a Clementine who was smart. We needed a character who was self-reliant. We needed a character who was there to 
help you and, and not be a hindrance. It was kind of a risk putting a kid uh, as a main character in a game. The fact that she was such a likable character, her heartbreaking relationship with Lee was amazing. She started out as a symbol of something to worry about, but she became a symbol of hope. She became something that represented what we all live for. I always look at Clementine season two as being defined by survivor's guilt. Stuff has happened, time has gone by, and she's not as trusting immediately of people she meets, and they're not trusting of her. The whole season of season two was about kind of weighing the options of how do you define your own family. One of the more defining characters that she meets in season two is Carver. In episode three, you know, he's basically like, you're not like the rest of them. You're meant to lead, you're not meant to follow. You can make the hard decisions. It is not difficult at all when things like the finale of season two happen where you have to make this horrible decision to feel that. I really legitimately felt so horribly sad in that session. What a horrible, tragic ending. I was actually surprised at how many people uh, in the end ended up going off on their own. The Clementine you meet at the beginning of season three is definitely shaped by the events of two. She's had a really rough go of it. Those that do survive generally tend to be those that have withdrawn into themselves and found internal strengths to kind of deal with the horrors. It all seemed to fit very well with where she's at in season three. There are times when I'm, when I'm doing Clementine's voice in season three where she is a bit lower than my voice. This area I have to speak in my throat, I can't really explain it. Season two was all about her trying to make a go of it in new families and new communities and how that really did not go well. Over the course of season three, she meets a family with which by the end, it did work. And so she's, I think, rejuvenated. In The New Frontier, Clem got to see something that she hadn't been exposed to in a long time. A functional family, a family that was still caring for each other throughout everything that they had gone through in the world of The Walking Dead so far. And she set out at the end of A New Frontier with one singular goal in mind, which was to find AJ and make that again for herself. Now, what she's going to do when she finds him, that is the story of season four. That is the story of future Clem. Who she wants to be, who she wants to be with, and how she wants to be, those are decisions the player's going to make. It was hearing from the fans all the way through season one and hearing that response, and that's what drove our decision to play as her in this fourth and final season. You will play as Clem. This will be Clem's story. It's going to be an amazing experience. Thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. It's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears and so much uh, love has been behind this whole experience. Good luck. I'll be right there with you. Fourth and final season. That was That's crazy. That was insane. I mean, it's been quite a journey from the first season to the fourth season. It has. And I'm so excited to play as Clementine again. She's such a badass. So in 2017, we have Batman the Enemy Within premiering. Yeah. And then in 2018, we have Walking Dead premiering. Mm -hmm. Is is there anything else, anything else that we are going to be premiering in 2018? Anything possibly comic book related? Mm hmm. You know. Anything the fans have been really requesting for, really want? You, we get a handful of tweets. We might actually have some special guests to to talk about this. Hmm. Inter yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Let's go take a look at that. Yeah. All right. Mean tweets, and if these are the meanest tweets, we're in good shape. Oh wow, we got so many, y'all. Abrams says, "Where the f is Wolf Among Us season two? I'm right there with you, buddy. Okay, this is getting ridiculous now. We want a second season of The Wolf Among Us already. 
It is ridiculous, I agree. You are correct. In all caps, season two Wolf Among Us, I want some damn answers. It's rude. At Senpai8, where is my boy, big bad wolf? Wolf emoji, at Wolf Among Us 2. Senpai may have noticed me, but he did not notice spell check. At D River O, I'm just gonna tweet y'all every day until we get the Wolf Among Us 2, I swear. Can we get someone to check if he actually did that? D River O has been tweeting us every day. Let's see if that's gonna pay off. Me, Telltale, when are we gonna get season two of The Wolf Among Us? Telltale, silence is a valid option. Okay, Mundies. You've been bugging me for three years. Where's season two? Where's more Wolf Among Us? Well, it finally paid off. Congratulations. Season two, 2018. Well, I think one of the things that makes Wolf Among Us so special is the general atmosphere of the game really commits to the detective story that we're trying to tell. Fables is fantastic. It's an award-winning series. This was our own take on, on Bill Willingham's world. This universe, this fable town, this iteration, everything was just bathed in neon. I feel like Bigby is facing in this game a interesting challenge of like he's got this past that he can't control. Being Snow, she's your right-hand man. So everything you do is going through the snow filter. <laughs> the thing that you want to do is the thing that you shouldn't do. To me, that's like wolf in a nutshell. I think we put people in a place where they really could connect with Big B in that dilemma. I think we're excited to get back into this world again. You know, a new story, a new mystery, an all new set of stakes. To the fans of The Wolf Among Us, I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you for your patience. You're getting Wolf Among Us season two. <laughs> Telltale fans, this is gonna be for you guys. Uh, this is happening because of you. I'm just really happy that we get to be able to do this.